Hi, I wanted to quickly show off a new module I'm working on for Microsplat. Um, uh, basically here I have an untextured terrain um, with just Microsplat slapped on it and I've gone ahead and I've lowered the actual splat map resolution down to 16 pixels so it has no uh, splat map data. Um, but if I go over to Microsplat here and I turn on procedural texture um, it will texture itself uh, and now this is because I've set it up before but once you turn this on uh, you'll be given a new interface which says procedural texture you have a choice of noise texture and I have one plugged in here um, I can explain that in a minute uh, height range for your height uh, this basically determines uh, the lowest and highest point uh, you want to work on in your terrain and then uh, you have a number of layers uh, and then the layer interface is the same for each layer and these kind of work like Photoshop layers uh, they aren't directly tied to the textures in your array uh, you can actually decide which texture um, each layer uh, is going to use and then uh, they have various procedural controls they have an overall weight so we can lower and raise the weight um, they have a curve for the height map uh, a curve for slope and then a noise function. I may add cavity in here but uh, there's no um, fast way to generate cavity information without taking a bunch of samples um, so I will uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna think about it see if I can come up with a quick way to do it um, but basically everything is happening right inside the shader here which is why it's all real-time uh, this also means that if I go and I change the terrain by painting on it it's going to change all the texturing with it based on the rule set um, and so this is different than what most things in the store that you may have seen do is they actually generate splat maps uh, that, that then the shader reads. Uh, this gets rid of all of that. You don't actually have any memory for splat maps. Uh, basically you are just computing uh, the texturing rules right in the terrain shader itself, um, which is pretty cool. And uh, so I'll show you how some of these controls work. If I open up the slope control, we have a nice curve here. And uh, you can see as I adjust this, I get more or less texture on the slope there. Um, I can flip to the other side, so we're, you know, just doing everything but the slope. Um, and uh, the noise function here, uh, it samples into this texture to make it quick. Um, I started out with procedural noise, but that gets pretty expensive pretty quickly. So you can uh, change the frequency of the noise, which will change uh, sort of where this stuff is appearing. Um, you can uh, change the min and the max of the noise. This is basically a ramping, uh, takes, it samples the noise value and then it says, okay, I want those in this range. And so with a range of negative 0.5 to three, uh, this is the effect we get. And um, so there's a lot of ways you can use this. You can, by boosting these out of range, you can um, uh, create a contrast on the noise. You can make it subtractive by having negative values, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, there's also an offset here, which just moves the noise. So if you happen to get them lining up, uh, you can move them to just sort of get them out of the way. Um, and the noise is applied uh, effectively, you know, after the slope filter. So it sort of dirties up whatever you've allowed with your slope filter. So if I come and tighten up this a little bit, I'm pulling it the other way, I can get these. Ah, see, sometimes when I'm editing these curves, I lift up a little bit, and then it shows up in areas I don't want. Um, so I can tighten these in so we don't see that appear on the flat spots, only really on the steep cliffs. We probably want a little more than that. Let's edit that a bit. Pull that back so it's a little more. There we go. Um, and then the way these layers work is... Uh, whatever weight this one uh, ends up as, uh, it applies that weight and subtracts it off the weight, and then this layer will come through. So it's kind of like Photoshop layers. If this one has no um, uh, alpha, it's going to cover up everything. Um, and you can also adjust the overall weight of that layer just to kind of uh, bring them in and out if you want. Um, and then, uh, you know, it'll continue to evaluate down. Uh, down these. So generally what you want to do is on your last layers have your sort of base texture um, and then you kind of work the other direction 
uh, kind of adjusting the alpha on means so that they um, uh, blend in and out. Um, so this is just a start of this module. Um, I'll probably do something to bake this out. So if you'd like it as splat map data, you can um, uh, bake it out from the train uh, with some kind of export feature. Um, and uh, but the nice thing about this is that you can uh, set this up and you can um, texture your trains automatically. And as you work on the trains and move things around. Uh, they will all uh, dynamically texture. Um, and over here, I have a couple options. There's a thing called a biome mask. This is basically an RGBA mask that you can use to uh, filter rules. Uh, if you turn this on, um, it will give you a texture that you can plug in. And that texture has, you know, the four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. And then on each of these, you will get uh, four values, and those are the weights for each channel. So what you can do is if you had red painted somewhere um, and then you had uh, a one in the red channel here, then it would only show where that red is painted on the map. Um, so basically what you can do is set up a bunch of rules. You set up, uh, you know, I don't know, 16 layers or something. Uh, and then basically each biome could, you know, you one could use five textures, one could use three, whatever you want. And then you could have an overall map that controls where the biomes are. Um, and then uh, the noise that gets applied uh, can be either in UV space, world space, or triplanar. Uh, by default, it's in world space, and that's just so that if you have multiple terrains uh, and they, um, uh, you know, want to connect, you, the noise uh, doesn't have a scene where it encounters the other terrain, uh, and rather just is done in world space. And then triplanar noise is uh, basically uh, most people won't have any use for that, but if you were working on something. Uh, like a spherical planet or something like that, then uh, you would need to try planar the noise. Or if your UVs aren't good for some reason, uh, you can try uh, try planar the noise. Um, so that's what that's for. And then uh, otherwise, that's basically it. Um, we also have height controls. So for instance, you might decide that you only want this to appear um, on the high parts. And you can see I can pull it off the high parts, so now it's only showing on the low parts. Um, or I can go the other way and get it off the lows here. So, um, you know, you can set up these filters uh, very easily and just play with all this stuff in real time. And uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Um, what will be interesting is getting this integrated in with Vegetation Studio so that as you adjust all these settings, all the vegetation uh, adapts as well. And then uh, integrating it with its biome feature. Uh, so as you, you know, place those biomes down, you can have uh, whole procedural texturings, texturings that happen at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't know when this is, is going to come out. Uh, you know, I, I probably have a lot more work to do on it, but uh, I thought it showed off early. Thanks.